What's up everybody? Shots with Cardinal Off Road and today we're going to finish up our Sterling 10 and a half as far as welding the truss on, all of our brackets on. Um, there's some spots I couldn't get to obviously when I was trying to set the four link up but now that's out from underneath the Jeep we can go ahead and finish all that stuff. Um, it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to show you how to weld the truss to the cast today as well, how to heat that up and also how to cool down slowly and things to watch. Um, the first thing we're going to do is go and clean this thing up. It's got a lot of dust on it um, from grinding and stuff like that. So we want to clean it up. That way when we go to weld, we got a nice clean surface. All right, so now that we have it cleaned up, all the pieces are in, um, we're gonna go ahead and weld all of the truss together and we'll also weld it to the tubes. We're not gonna weld anything to the cast yet, we're gonna do that last. Um, that way make it a little easier. When you're welding this stuff to your tubes, it's not a bad idea to kind of move around. These tubes can actually warp if you get too much heat to it. So, and you might not realize it until you get completely done and get it on the Jeep. So, just do a little bit at a time. You know, do here, do here, turn the truss around, do some different spots, um, and just keep moving around, you'll be okay. So we're going to go ahead and knock out all the welding for the truss and to the axle tubes, and then when we're done with that, we'll move to the cast. So we got everything welded to the tube, uh, all the brackets and stuff are fully welded. Now we can go ahead and weld the truss to the cast. Um, now it's already pretty warm, it's probably about 100, lower 100 degrees from welding everything. So that kind of helps you out because you're going to have to heat this cast up to about 400 degrees. I'm going to use a couple of torches here. It shouldn't take too long. Um, the biggest thing is you want to make sure you get that heated up. And then when we're fully done, we're going to cool this down slowly. Now you can use heat to cool it down slowly. So maybe you're five, 10 minutes, you just kind of heat it, hit it with a little heat. And you also want something to actually check the temperature um, of the metal in the cast. So what happened is if you don't um, heat this cast up, you have a good chance of the weld cracking because the steel and the cast are going to cool down at uh, different temperatures or at different rates. So we're going to go ahead and heat this all up and then we're gonna weld it. We're gonna move our welding around when we're done. I got a couple welding blankets. We're gonna wrap it up real tight. Um, use some welding blankets. You can always wrap it with some insulation or some blankets after that. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. As you do your welding um, and after you're completed, you want to make sure you keep the heat on all your welds that you did. Um, otherwise, they're going to crack uh, because the cast and the steel are going to cool at different speeds. So, I just finished everything. I'm completely done. Now, all I'm going to do is take my torches and just kind of do a quick run down over them. The one thing you don't want to do is heat up to 400 degrees. And then you weld it, it stays around 400 degrees, and then it cools down to, uh, let's just say, 150 degrees um, quickly. It's going gonna, it's gonna to crack and you're going to hear it normally. 
Um, you kind of get like a ping sound or whatever. Glass blankets on, you can literally wrap this with anything coats, sweatshirts, regular blankets, insulation, whatever you have laying around. The biggest thing is you want to wrap some stuff around just to keep that heat in. Um, I've seen a lot of guys where they'll just use the fiberglass blankets. Um, I mean, if they're doing it, it's got to work, right? So um, I know some people out there will just use a torch to kind of slowly cool it down, and that's great and all. Um, but if you're using extra map gas. Uh, this stuff is exactly the cheapest, but also then you got to sit there and, you know, wait uh, to kind of cool it down slowly. Now, if you're trying to get this axle in real quick, um, maybe that's the best way to go. But if you're doing a one-ton swap, there's nothing quick about it. So I don't, you know, you know, I know some people want to sit there and wash their welds too. And that's great. I mean, you know, whichever works best for you is fine. I've used this method on my Dana 60. I don't see no issues. I wonder the welds, they seem okay. Um, and I put some really fat welds on those on that truss. Um, I use the same method on my knuckles, although I use sand. And if I could use sand, that is definitely the first thing I would go for, uh, just because you know there's no air uh, with using sand. And that works out great for my high steer kit on my uh, Dana 60. So, but you wrap it up good. Now I'm just going to let this sit overnight. I'm not in no hurry. Tomorrow I will grind everything down, sand everything down, we'll prime, we'll paint, um, and get it cleaned up and ready to put back in the Jeep. Uh, I definitely recommend, if you don't have a big torch, I do have a big torch but I ran out of gas. If you have a big torch, that's the best way to go, but if you don't, map gas would be my next option. The propane is okay, doesn't get near as hot, and if you look at this flame, versus this one. So, big difference. I would definitely get this tip as well. Um, I think this is sold separately. It's not with the kit. Um, There's just an option for you. Get you a couple of fiberglass blankets. I don't think they're that much. I want to say 15 bucks maybe. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think they're around there. Get a couple of those, wrap it up tight, put your sweatshirts, blankets, insulation, whatever you want to use around it, and just let it sit. The biggest thing is you want to keep as much heat in there as possible. So we're going to let this sit overnight, we'll come back tomorrow, we'll sand it down, look at all of our welds, and then we'll put some prime paint on. Alright, so we're back the next day, we're going to take everything off and see what we got. Now we're gonna go ahead and now we're gonna go ahead and I want to do some grinding and some sanding, uh, just kind of smooth everything out on the axle, and then we'll prime and paint it. All right, so we got it all set in primer. We're just gonna let it dry and then we'll put some paint on it. Now I'm just gonna use some uh, spray paint because uh, the axles are gonna get scratched up obviously from rocks. So I see no reason in 
spending more money and then taking longer to paint it so one thing I did use though is a self-etching primer this stuff is really good um, <coughs> especially there's spots where it's hard to sand if you got a little bit of surface rust and stuff um, just put a few coats of this stuff on and actually um, eat that primer away and I'll take care of it for you All right, so we got it all primed, painted. Now, I didn't paint all the way at the ends, and I'm gonna have to sand a little bit off because I gotta weld my um, caliper brackets on. But I'll do that at a different date. Um, other than that, this is a pretty simple thing to do. Uh, I didn't show you how to put the truss together, but you can't mess these things up. Um, you can see right there where I got them welds. Those are for them front and back plates to actually fit up in there. So you can only put this on one way. Very simple to do. Everything turned out good. The welds look good. And for an axle out of a 2005, you know, everything looks good. If you have any questions, let me know. Any comments, um, let us know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Still got a lot of videos coming out. And this is a good thing to do yourself if you can. You know, if you got the tools, uh, there's no reason not to. It's going to save you a lot of money uh, rather than buying an axle that's already built. And just to have the pride in doing it yourself.